how do you view the current U.S.-China trade relations? Uh, obviously, uh, President Trump launched a trade war, uh, which much of it still uh, continues since the Biden administration came into power. Well, I think the, the U.S.-China relationship is in serious trouble. Like many, I uh, was very hopeful um, a year ago uh, when we got the results of the um, 2020 presidential election that there would be a significant shift in U.S. policy toward China uh, under the Biden administration. Uh, and um, on the first day that President Biden took office, January 20th, uh, 2021, he signed approximately 14 executive orders reversing many of the most unpopular actions of the Trump administration, but he did nothing to change a U.S. policy with respect to China. Uh, and this is a major disappointment. If anything, the, um, uh, the tensions have escalated with respect to uh, putting more uh, Chinese technology companies on the so-called uh, entity list or blacklist of the U.S. Uh, Commerce Department. So my overall sense of uh, the relationship is uh, one of disappointment uh, and one of great concern uh, going forward. I think uh, many, uh, including uh, the USTR and also the Treasury uh, Secretary, have spoken about possibly phasing out some of the tariffs, but it has there has been no concrete actions or plans. Why do you think that is? The answer is um, is is one word: politics. President Biden, uh, as you know, has a very narrow majority. Uh, of, um, of of representation uh, in the U.S. Um, uh, uh, House and, of course, uh, a virtual tie uh, in terms of representation in the U.S. Senate. There's no margin for him to exercise uh, uh, political uh, uh, leadership on key controversial issues. The second point is that U.S. Uh, public opinion polling shows widespread uh, negative uh, views on China. The negative sentiment is uh, shared by Republicans and Democrats, old and young, college educated uh, and uneducated. Uh, and, um, you know, this is a very uh, uh, clear indictment of um, uh, any uh, actions that U.S. politicians, especially someone with a, a very narrow margin of support like Joe Biden, might take uh, in uh, changing the China policy. Set of di very difficult political circumstances that has prevented uh, the president from really uh, rethinking uh, or changing America's policy with respect to China. Uh, I think that's wrong. Uh, I wish it were different, but, um, you know, we, we live in a very uh, highly political climate in the United States, and it's difficult to imagine how the U.S. is going to change this dynamic in a short period of time. What about trade? Are there any areas in trade where, uh, where both countries can pursue uh, at least some dialogue, if not agreement? Well, look, my, my views on trade are um, pretty well known and they're, um, they're, they're not widely accepted uh, on the U.S. side. The logic behind it uh, is flawed. The logic uh, goes that American uh, middle class workers are suffering um, largely because of big trade deficits uh, the biggest piece of the trade deficit is with China, uh, and uh, China uh, practices unfair uh, uh, trading uh, arrangements, and therefore we must penalize China with tariffs. That's the argument that um, politicians uh, make both on the Democrat and Republican side, and the American public has bought and agreed with that argument. 
The view, however, is completely incorrect. America last year had trade deficits with 96 countries. That's a multilateral problem, not a bilateral problem. And the reason it's a multilateral problem is because we have a deficit of saving uh, brought about in large part uh, by massive budget deficits in the United States. When a country like America doesn't save but wants to grow, we import surplus savings from abroad and we run a massive current account uh, and multilateral trade deficit to attract the foreign saving. That's the way economics works. And so if you put pressure on one trading partner like China um, without addressing the savings problem, and we have not, then all you get is the trade gets moved from China to other producers, most likely higher cost producers. How do you see China's economic outlook into the next year? Well, I've been following the Chinese economy very closely for close to 30 years. And I, I must say uh, that China is very consistent in always focusing on stability. So I'm not surprised, especially going into the, um, uh, you know, the, the party Congress later remains um, a high priority of the, the senior leadership. Um, but it's a balancing act. The Chinese uh, leadership uh, now for um, about five and a half years uh, has been very worried about uh, excess debt uh, and the need to avoid uh, a Japanese-like um, uh, problem. And so the deleveraging campaign, um, especially aimed at the property sector, has uh, become an increasingly important objective uh, of uh, the government. I'm hopeful that yeah, even though uh, the combination of deleveraging and supply chain issues um, have led to a slowdown uh, of um, uh, economic activity in China recently, that uh, the government uh, will not back away from its efforts uh, to uh, address uh, the leveraging. Uh, I do think that there's still plenty of uh, room to provide some near-term monetary stimulus. The recent cut in the triple R ratio uh, indicates that the People's Bank of China uh, takes um, uh, you know, that potential very seriously. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I think that's uh, you know, a possibly a hint of more to come. Uh, and um, I think the Chinese economy will perform better than expected uh, in 2022.